Hey everybody, welcome to Nexus at Night, your weekly Vanguard podcast, brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com slash nexus at night. I'm drinking chocolate milk like a grown man should. I'm Matt. I'm playing video games. Are you ever not playing video games? Yeah, they're usually during a set review. Oh, yeah. Wait, no. What, what yeah. did, oh, right. It's you hard look to up play video games during a set review. That's true. Oh. You have to read cards. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't usually uh, go off and do other stuff during most episodes, like I'll answer yes. a text or something. But play, like, I admire your multitasking skills in general. That's, yeah, I'm uh, unable to do that. It's really hard. <laughs> I'm just like doing that too, going for you. Ah, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I've, uh, I haven't been playing it too much because I've had work the past couple of days, but I'm excited to get back to it. It's uh, people online are really positive about it, so that's good. Oh, that's good. That's hey. good. I feel like Psychonauts is one of those games where you can't really hate it. It's just like either... Yeah, but it, it didn't sell very well, so not a lot of people played it like when it came out. Right, but then it has like that... I feel like cult movies... It's like a cult classic, yeah, basically. Yeah, like cult movies, cult video games, no one ever hates those. They're just like, yeah, people enjoy them. Good for them. That's true. Yeah. That's anyway, true. Uh, uh, Vanguard-related shit. So um, the, the idea for this episode came from our group chat which uh, it, it, it kind of went off on its uh, own tangents, patreon.com slash nexus at night, with, uh, <laughs> with James and Chris. Nice plug, real subtle. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, with James and Chris, who have both been on this show, I tried to get at least one of them to come on. They were both busy. Um, but the idea of uh, floodgates in Vanguard um, and whether that would be a good idea uh, to implement... Uh, well, before we begin, what is a floodgate, Alice? All right. I'm going to kill you. Okay, a floodgate. <laughs> all right, a floodgate uh, in colloquial terms is a uh, card usually uh, like a like a per- semi-permanent fixture. Like in Yu-Gi-Oh, there would be continuous spell cards. I'm not sure what they're like in Magic, uh, where it shuts down the opponent in some major way. Usually they can't play X type of card or activate X effect. Am I, I close? Think, yeah, so so, you, so you'd so be saying cards like Macrocosmos, like that make any card that would hit the graveyard be banished instead, or cards like Skill Drain, or cards like, you know, yeah. there could be only one, stuff like that. Yeah, a famous yeah, one so now is Mystic like, Mind. Res- yeah, restrict your opponents from playing the game, and Mystic Mind is being, you know, a egregious one for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Magic has some cards that are vaguely like that, uh, but they're they're usually much more like they're not as free to get in play, right? Like, like if you know you're playing, you know, fucking um, Mystic Mind, you just slam on the table, right? Yeah, you just play. It's like it. not a cost to doing that. Yeah. Uh, in Magic, you typically have to pay mana for it. Um, so, for example, the probably the oldest one is a card called Moat. Uh, Moat is an, a four mana enchantment that says creatures without flying cannot attack. Okay. Uh, wait, maybe flying or, or island walk. Uh, let me get the modern text of this card, actually. Okay. Moat MTG. Uh, but that's still still like. Oh a... no! Yeah, just, no, you can't even attack if you have island walk for some reason. Okay. What's island walk? Island walk says you can't be blocked if the enemy, if the defending player controls an island. So it's usually have like from like fish creatures will have island walk. Oh, okay. Um, and so, like, but, you know, if you'd think if a creature could move through water, a moat would not stop them. I mean, you can't but get into the castle effect. itself. You'd just be in the moat or whatever. I don't know. Uh, I mean, come on. I'm just splitting <laughs> hairs here. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, So Magic has some, but the the cost to get them out is, like, pretty heavy. Yeah. So they're they're typically a little more uh, balanced in that respect. Yeah. Um, but you go, you know, you just flip them up, and your opponent's like, ah, damn it. Yeah, I think that's just kind of how Yu-Gi-Oh is in general, where costs are are mostly paid either through, like, losing other cards, like discard this card, do this, uh, or more often paying life points, which don't matter. Yeah. So, that... I mean, it sucks when your opponent just goes, I'm going to flip up Imperial Order, and you're just like, yeah, that card's legal, apparently. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't for a long time, and then they eroded it. Yeah, because that, okay. yeah, that, that card's so fucking annoying. Yeah, uh, Imperial Order, what is it? Shuts down all spell cards, right? Yeah, all spell cards are negated. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to, like, find the actual uh, group chat, because what happened was they started talking, and then I had to go to bed, and then they kept talking through the whole night. Um, oh, it's because they, 
James randomly asked us what we thought about the current state of the game at, like, 10 in the morning. So we were both at work. That's right. Okay, yeah. And then uh, and then we had to continue doing work, and they just kept going and going. But um, I read none of this conversation, by the way. Fair enough. It, they're very fast. They're very fast typers. But yeah. um, I, I guess that's a good place to start is uh, where they, like, if they think Overdress is on a good trajectory. Um, and to everyone's surprise, Chris kind of said no, because Chris is the eternal optimist among all of us. But, um, yeah, you guys, also, of, uh, you also brought, enchanted. you guys also brought this up kind of during the proof episode without me, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little bit. Um, where, because, uh, of all these like little sub- you know, archetypes within nations were almost back to clans a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Like, I mean, the problem we're having with nations and overdress was a problem that clans had too, where you just had like a bunch of different archetypes within a deck doing a million different things. Mm -hmm. But at least they're being supported every set this time. Mm. Yeah. That is a plus for sure. I guess nations are like clans that were optimized, is the best way to describe it. Still has the same fundamental problems, but we're at least doing it consistently, I guess? Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm kind of not happy about the third ride lines for each thing, because then that's, you're subdividing it more. Yeah. I think we were all kind of hoping that we could go a little while before more ride lines were added, though encounter cards kind of messed that up to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though they are surprisingly being supported this set, I kind of figured Bushiro would be one and done with them. I still maintain... I think my view is still that encounter cards were generally not a great idea. Yeah. Especially because it's adding all this bloat to the game. Definitely. Um, it hasn't been all bad. Like, uh... Where where some nations have like at least a vaguely cohesive um, mm-hmm. theme among them. Like for example, in Brandgate, set orders seem to be the through line there. Like you have the world thing with Orphist and the prison, and now this uh, space Gridora meteorite thing, which are also set orders. So a card like Bulbul Mine, for example, mm-hmm. uh, can be used in all three of those decks fairly easily. Um, some need it, some decks need it more than others, but it, it's like a card that isn't tied to oh you need uh, Orphis as your vanguard to do this. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the thing. It's like it's not that these cards don't exist. It's that like there aren't enough of them, mm-hmm. and a lot of the ones that exist aren't that great. Bubble Line has been largely an exception. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think. I also- it's also a matter of card pool. Like, as we yeah. time goes on, this will inevitably get bigger. What were you going to say? Yes. Although, like, while we're on the topic of Brantgate, I'm still not sure how I feel about orders in their current state. Like, there's a part of me that, like, wants to minimize how many orders I'm playing simply because they are not rear guards. Yeah. And a lot of the time are also not shield. And, you know, I feel like some of that is just the inherent deck building restrictions that are part of the game so the fact that like half of your deck by default are not rear guards kind of sucks although or don't want to be rear guards yeah like Uh, trick like trying to think about it like triggers are in kind of a weird place because they are necessary for shield value uh not sure how i feel about trigger effects as a part of the game, but that's a completely different topic. But yeah, I feel like the addition of orders highlights how restrictive deck building actually is. Because, like, out of the 50 cards available, half of them are being taken up by cards you're not going to play, or don't really want to play on the board. Although I'm not sure how to quantify the ride lines in that. And then... Any deck that needs to play orders, you're giving up, like, another third of your remaining playable cards for things that are not rear guards. Uh, A lot of the time don't have defensive value either. And, you know, don't directly contribute to you winning the game, although they might facilitate it 
because of things like Orphus and now I guess Gravidia, mm-hmm. the alien lady. Space Gregora. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, like the it works so well in those in the Brandgate decks because their ride lines directly search the orders out of the deck for you to then immediately yeah. use. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing is like they were the decks were designed to use orders, but even looking at something like Zorga, there are times where I feel like. I wish I could actually just play more rear guards instead of having like ten orders in my deck. Mm-hmm. And you know? uh, I, I wish the Alka Magic thing just worked like bind two from drop and play them. <laughs> yeah, and because like set two introduced a lot of interesting tech cards, but you know you're probably not playing a lot of them because one they're niche, but two half of your playable cards are just being taken up by orders. And then, I think blitz orders are even are in an even worse state because, you know, let's see. You have in terms of ones that are actually good. You have ghost chase, whose main purpose is to recycle on play effects and not as a guard. And the the one for again brand gate. It seems like this this is like their be- like best design, where it can like lower the power of something. And even then, not a lot of decks play it all that much. So. Yeah, because what. Le- he, that's the thing is whenever we talk about Bushiro making more defensive cards, we usually talk in the context of like cards that can do multiple things. So like something like Agra Rouge or Urger, where it has strong offensive value and defensive utility with the extra shield value. Th- cards like that are nice because it doesn't feel like you're giving anything up in the deck building process. It's not a dead card you know, half the time you draw it because it's not doing one thing or the other when you need it. <clears throat> also, like, the restriction of one order per turn, I feel like, limits the utility of orders. Like, order-based decks kind of have to have some sort of mechanic to be able to use multiple orders. Yeah, no, it's literally on on paper. Uh, originally, the idea for this episode um, came from whether Vanguard would benefit from having a main phase two, which we might still do that, but uh, th- that would, you know, on paper allow you to play more orders, but... Um, yes. I feel like if, if our orders are going to have a cost attributed to them, just, like, that's the thing. You pay the cost, and that's it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it feels not... like all of them have costs, right? But, like, <laughs> how, like... Like, how good is it, would it even be to play some of these orders multiple times a turn? I guess there'd be some of them, but, like, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like, maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like right now, like, deck building feels more restrictive than I want it to be. And I don't know how they fix that, because... uh Lowering the mandatory number of triggers kind of presents problems defensively because that is another criticism that we've had about Overdress right now is lacking shield value. So taking away triggers isn't really helping that situation. Maybe if Blitz Orders could be used on both turns so you could actually use a Blitz Order offensively as well. Yeah, like a, like a quick play spell or something. Mm-hmm. Um well, because, like, looking at it on paper, like, with those examples I used before, you had uh, Ghost Chase. So, Ghost Chase, you could be like, all right, I, I play the Fox guy, get my thing 5k, and back or attack. Ghost Chase, bounce my Fox, play it again. Um, yeah. And then do that again, or uh, play the order, make make your guy minus uh, 15k, because I have three things in prison um, mm-hmm. for the turn, which is pretty wacky on paper. <laughs> um, which is... Also, like, a criticism that Chris made of the game is, you know, the lack of interaction right now. Mm-hmm. It was basically just a game... Vanguard definitely feels like competitive solitaire. As much as people like to make fun of Yu-Gi-Oh for that, you do have, like, ways to interrupt your opponent, theoretically. Mm-hmm. And Vanguard is largely lacking in that. I feel like G almost figured it out with, like, the G-Zone and G-Guardians... Mm-hmm. You know, G had other problems, but I feel like the your G deck was always, like, a pretty good 
mechanic in the game, and I kind of miss it. You know? Yeah, I find myself only really caring about V right now. Like, <laughs> Overdress just feels like... You know, like, you play, you get playing again, and then you have that game where, like, the Overture comes up, and you're just like, ah, oh, yes. <sighs> yeah. This again. <laughs> yeah. I think I most know people don't... I know people don't like having, like, an extra side deck, but I don't know. I feel like that at the way things they were able to do with the G deck during uh, the stride era of the game were interesting, even if the game had other balance problems at the time. I feel like if they could incorporate more external items from your main deck, it would uh, add more variety to the game in terms of deck building and mm -hmm. add the potential for interact. Uh, interactivity on your opponent's turn so that you're not just staring at them doing their thing. Or just, yeah, or just uh, twiddling your thumbs. Okay, it's battle phase now? Okay, I'll start paying attention. Um, <laughs> um, and we had a whole episode on this about like the idea of a side deck. I can't remember what number it is, just control F side deck, see if you find it. Um, but uh, I think it would be interesting for orders to be like separate from the main deck but then it comes down to uh do you how many can you have you know when would you be allowed to play them i think uh it, 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 that would be cool though just to be able like especially for space Gridora, like for that many meteor orders that you that takes up a large mm -hmm. chunk of your deck having that be completely separate and like okay you you can you can still only play one order a turn but you know go nuts like <laughs> yeah, that deck is designed to just search out orders to negate mm -hmm. the whole once per turn thing, anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think Ravidia is where I started thinking about like the restrictions on deck building, where it's like you can have up to sixteen meteors, and you know, reading that, I'm like, why would I ever have sixteen meteors? That leaves me with ten rear guards to put in my deck. Yeah, and th and then it turns into sixteen more garnets in the hand. Cool. That would be interesting. I feel like we should try that, like, in practice. Like, okay, you, you get 15. Uh, you, you can play up to 15 orders. You can play one one order a turn as long as you, you can pay the cost. Yeah. And there you go. Blitz orders, you still got to put in the main deck because I don't really know how to square that circle. But, uh, like... I mean, they could do something similar to G-Garb where you have to pay an extra cost for Blitz orders, and then Blitz orders could be more... Pa Basically, I just want them to put G guards back in the game. I like G guards. I liked them except for Denial Griffin. So yeah, um, yeah. But then that kind of goes back to our idea of floodgates, where oh no, that doesn't make Denial Griffin bad. It's just, it's yeah, I'm, we hate that card. I'm frustrated with it. That's not its I fault. Think, <laughs> I, yeah, Denial Griffin isn't quite a floodgate, but you know, it makes it the effect twice. is similar. It stops your opponent from doing things. And I, I wonder how it would feel if there was just no Persona Red. Oh, uh, yeah. That was another thing that I think I wanted to talk about. Because you had brought it up before, where just getting a casual 10k to your front row for free. It's, like, kind of excessive. Uh-huh. And it also breaks a lot of the multi-attacking decks, because it's just, like, the balancing factor was always that they couldn't hit very good numbers in theory, but... Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what that's what makes uh, Bruce and uh, Bastion so good, is that their multi-attacking deals with restanding shit in the front row. Versus the other decks that can multi-attack, it's like, Magnolia, it's in the back. Yeah. Right, be... right. Yeah, so... but Bastion also just had huge numbers to begin with. Right. Persona but... riding just pushes it over the top, but... Yeah, but... Uh, Bruce is a good example where you have Marjorie, where only becomes 23k, which is decent, but not amazing. It's still only one card. And then on a Persona Ride turn, suddenly it's just 33 without a booster, and you're like, but why? I forbid if that thing was multiple times a turn. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that's balanced by the final rush mechanic, but mm -hmm. you know, it's not... Uh, nothing's perfect, I guess. Um, yeah, and then they also have a card that just gets a crit for no reason. Oh yeah, the uh, well also like Leonard's the fucking elephant in the room. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Leonard. But honestly, like Eden's restand, if you can get it big enough, is very scary. Mm -hmm. 
Especially with the doggo now, you can be like, uh, 33, restand, 35 with a crit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, aside from that suggestion of, like, okay, you have, uh, normal orders being, like, a separate, uh, deck thing, um, I imagine after you use them, they go to drop zone, and then you can still do your alchemagic shit, uh, like, wh- what if uh, we we implemented some kind of floodgate thing, like a Mystic Mind, like a there can be only one? Uh, what would something like that look like, you think? Hmm. So, one that comes to mind already is the card that was like, if your opponent, like, uh, attacks enough times in a turn, they have to, like, you know, do something, right? They have to, like, switch, uh, so- was it kind of one? Hanali. Yeah, yeah, you need to counterblast one if you attack too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, like, effectively what that is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you could, like... I don't, I don't know how well that cause that's balanced because, like, you have to be able to, like, get it out instantly or find it or whatever. Or, like, play four and hope to draw it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, that's kind of an example of what one would look like. Um, yeah. But it definitely benefits decks that are able to search it out more than... Mm-hmm. Or like you know, mill through their deck faster. Yeah, but like the the decks that multi attack tend not to really have removal options. Mm-hmm. Um, so that like in the matchup with Hanali on the board and they can't remove it, then that affects the multi attack deck. Where it becomes weird is when everything has everything, and then you're like, I can multi attack, but also I can get rid of that shit because that that's a pain in the ass. Like it right. it, it would. Uh, you would have to be careful with how you supported decks and your power creep as time went on. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, you know, decks like... Hmm. I wonder how much it would help Zorga, because the nectar of sensationalism becomes more valuable, being able to deal... Like, having ways to deal more than one damage, basically. Yeah. Uh, it also makes Prison very strong with the new Grade 3, where... Oh, I'm so you know, excited for that thing. Holy shit. <laughs> it just punishes you for having a board. Yeah. Which could, again, we'll see how the meta shakes out, but that card could be a problem. I'm not, like, I know I said that that is one of the ways they could bridge the gap between uh, three attack decks and decks that can attack more than that is to start giving the three attack decks easier access to criticals. But, uh, you know... I also admitted that that was not a great suggestion and that people probably wouldn't like it. And lo and behold, they made a card that does just that, and I'm not sure I like it. Now, granted... They also gave criticals to the multi-attacking decks, because why not? Yeah. Why, Eden or something else? Yeah, or... Oh, yeah. No, I'm not only Eden, but the uh, Pandemonium Tactics as well. Right, Uh, right. Oh, yeah. Because why not? (laughs) Yeah. I think they're just hoping you won't realistically get to 12 soul in any reasonable time frame. Yeah, but it does soul charge 4, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you just have to, like, keep that in mind and just not... Like, you're playing toward that now. Um, I mean, I don't think that's the part that you care about of that card, specifically. Mm-hmm. It's the soul charge 4, that's what you're after? Uh, it's Well, it's the soul charge 4 and the front row 10k. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can, like have eight you're probably like perfectly perfectly fine with that Mm -hmm. i think at six it or like you know at six or more it's bad Mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah yeah but like i think that whatever uh, i gotta go google this card now because i don't remember what all the numbers were oh the the pandemonium (sighs) tactics yeah it's six eight twelve Okay. Six draw card, eight ten k front row, twelve. Uh, yeah. Tri- plus one vanguard. Okay. Yeah, but I think eight is pretty easy to get. Yeah, I mean you need to start with four, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, like doggo, if Leonard hits anything, that's a soul charge, regardless of if he uses call skill. Yeah, Marjorie too, right? Or like yeah. whatever, depending on what how you ended last turn. Mhm. Yeah, I think eight is not unrealistic to get consistently. All right. On the plus side, at least it's not giving crits to, like, a rear guard. It's always to Van, which is the weakest part of your attack most of the time. 
I mean, I guess, but it's also gonna make 10k in your front row. Yeah. So it's not even that. Yeah, I like that. Doesn't that doesn't make it okay? It just makes it slightly <laughs> less shitty. That's it. It's just, if you're on Persona Ride and uh, you activate this, you're still on a 33k Vanguard, which is perfectly fine. 43 if you got the over trigger earlier in the game. Yeah, but if you have that, then your Vanguard already had a crit all the time, and you probably already want to die. I know, and that's what happens to me at locals, like, consistently. So, you know. Please, just... get... Please ban over triggers, Bushy Road. You have... We're three sets in, and we all still hate it. Well, what we well... need is, we need old Zombaki that stops your opponent from riding again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that has been a weird thing about uh, Bushiro with Vanguards. They really want you to, like, re-ride, because there was, like... I feel like early in the game, they had, like, cross-riding, right? Right, and then, yeah. And you would uh, never ride again afterward. Yeah, and then... I think early Limit Break didn't have a whole lot of emphasis on re-riding. I guess there were cross-rides with Ultimate Break, too, but then break riding they really wanted to push that like rewriting thing and getting benefits from that break riding and then with legion like you would kind of do it just because for soul costs and stuff yeah like for get... soul but also a lot of cards only had effect during the turn they legion so you had to like rewrite and do it again yeah and then with the g zone that it wasn't so much that it was the uh the ultimate yeah. stride well yeah I would say G is the one time they didn't emphasize that, but that's also because Strides offered a level of versatility where you could change what, what your boss unit was at any given time. Yeah. Um, is why, which is why, mechanically, Strides has always been my favorite, but, you know, I'm, I don't want to keep repeating myself that it had problems, but I would like... To, I would like to see Stride done right. Maybe if they ever fix premium, God... Well, uh, that, uh, well, we'll talk next week maybe. Next. Yeah. No, I don't we'll talk about that next week. At this point, but... they're not gonna they're not gonna touch it till after Worlds. Mm -hmm. Which feels really bad because it's gonna be like you know another half a year or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hooray for COVID. Like I wouldn't mind having a stride based format that was good again, but like, yeah. Yeah, I. Uh... I met up with my friends last week, and uh, Richard of Nexus Core, Richard, uh, got me to play a premium game with him. Um, and I, I hadn't touched my Great Nature deck in, I think, a year or so. Like, I literally blew dust off of it. And uh, I got my balls rocked. So that was fun, uh, because as it turns out, restanding talented rhinos over and over doesn't really do as much anymore. So, yep. yeah. Felt good. It's all about, uh, you know, just jamming. Well, I don't even know what's busted in premium at this point. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, Probably. it's either multi-attacks, like, it doesn't really matter what they are, just as long as you can multi-attack that much, and, uh, card advantage. You can play with the eye, you can play with Pale Moon, you know, whatever. I do still mm -hmm. have my Pale Moon, I, can, I, I should bring that next time and try it on him. Uh, but... Back to the actual topic of Floodgates. Sorry. Uh, so... <laughs> Don't worry, I've been leading us off this topic with random complaints, too. Hey, if you, if you want to see more of this, patreon.com slash nexus at night. But, uh... <laughs> that's two. That's two. Uh, Please. So, if we were to, inv you know, invent some kind of, like, floodgate set order, like, all right, you play... Or, like, let's say, like, Orphist, because that's, you know, comfortable with the concept of it. Like, they make a new thing that's a world card... And like while it's out, the opponent can't attack more than three times. What do you do then as the opponent in terms of like balancing? There's no way to get rid of that thing. Yeah. It, well, obviously interactivity is one thing. Like your opponent has to be able to get around it somehow. Even Hanali, even though it was a steep cost, you could get around it. Yeah, and even against something like Prison. Prison has recourse against it. You can counter blast, you can soul blast, you can break your stuff out. Yeah. Um, cough, cough, Lint Choker. But uh, if if they were to do something like this, there's not really any way around it as it is now. I feel like you would have to put something on the card. Like, if uh, the opponent pays 
uh, like counter blast two, soul blast one, like something wacky or whatever, then this card is destroy. You know, put this card in your drop zone. Something. Mm-hmm. Um, or have it for a set amount of turns, like for three turns after this card is activated. Swords of Revealing Light in Vanguard. <laughs> yes, exactly. Swords of Revealing Light in Vanguard. Ah, uh, yes, that's what Bushi wants. I cannot believe I said that completely <laughs> earnestly. Kill me. Yeah. And that, you, you know, know, we need one day a piece, clearly. Ah, <laughs> that's the way to do it. Or what? Draw both players draw and no no damage, right? No no attacking. Uh yeah. <laughs> Can we do effect damage? Wait, really? Is that it? It's like no. Yeah, that's how one day piece works. Oh, I thought it was like no battle damage. I can't remember. It's been a while. No, no, no. no. The, no. So a lot of them are no battle damage, but one day of piece for whatever reason is all no like damage damage. Oh. Like, neither player takes damage until end of the opponent's next turn. Like, so, if you activate, you know, like a fucking Just Desserts, right? Yeah. They will not take damage from that because after one day piece. It's very funny. <laughs> but one day, one day of piece is not a cool card. That card's lame. Yeah. It's a real pain in the ass. Um... <sighs> Can you, can you think of, like, another way to, like, maybe implement some kind of floodgate? So, the Zombaku one's, I think, the funniest. Uh, <laughs> where it's tied to another effect? Well, no, where you just, like, they can't re-ride. Or, like, you know, if you pay some cost, they can't re-ride. Uh, other ones, like... You could have a unit that's just, like negate skills right of like rear guards Mm -hmm. but not vanguard skills yeah that would be like another way but i'm i think that would be like way too strong and not a lot of people would have a way to get rid of it Mm -hmm. i think what you would have to do is so like you know how infinite and permanence like negates the thing in the same column is it Uh, oh yeah 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 that could work for the rest of the turn so it'd be something like all right uh maybe make it like a eugene thing right or counter blast soul blast (laughs) retire something in the same column and and negate the effects of any rear guards played in that column until like the end of your next turn something like mm-hmm. that um make it real oh, well, th- then again stoic ko would just be like all right i'm gonna move this over here activate it move it back <laughs> um i know i keep comparing things to that but it, it's just <clears throat> what i have so sorry well, it's um, gonna negate that unit <laughs> yeah exactly okay but that that's like i i think that would be a reasonable uh you know, record. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah. Although one problem is, uh, the I like just trying to keep track of it all. What? Where you're just like, is Can't it? Keep track of a column. Or not so much that. Just wait. Did he activate it last turn? I can't remember. You know, shit like that. Oh no! Just make it a continuous. Not what I meant, but okay. Uh, what do you mean activate it last turn? No. Okay. So let's say you, you you do do your thing. You kill the guy. And that effect is active until the end of your next turn. Then oh, you no, just... just, no, just have it be continuous. So if they kill it, it's gone. Oh, that's better? It's much simpler. Yeah. Although, <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> All right. make it so complicated? I don't know. Uh, I, I was just trying to, you know, think of ways to do that. I feel like uh, you could also have uh, floodgates in the form of a blitz order, which, like, I feel like if they're going to make them playable, they, they really got to swing for the fences on that. So so maybe a thing like, alright, you, uh, you know, you blitz, ballroom blitz, play the, pay the cost, um, the opponent can't attack more than three times for the rest mm-hmm. of the turn. And then, I don't know why I'm tying it to three attacks, but that seems like the most, quote, balanced way to do it. Mm-hmm. What do we think? Uh, that would be pretty strong, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it would also be... It, it's something that, A, gives the player on defense something to do. B, isn't, like, a thing where the... Uh, it, it doesn't make, like, the a player on offense at too disadvantageous of a position it then makes them have to play differently where they're like okay I know that this bliss order is a thing in this nation I better keep an mm-hmm. eye out for it um, so like for example 
uh, when I'm playing Magnolia, what I will do is I know that when you choose the wolf with uh, Magnolia's effect, it gets an extra 5k. So that allows me to hit over triggers on damage. So if I'm playing against, you know, whatever hypothetical nation has this blitz order, I would then be, instead of trying to go for, you know, six weak attacks, I would be going for three, like, you know, bangers um, mm. to, like, try and waste as many cards as possible until I either see that they play it or, uh, you know, they don't have enough cards in hand or can't pay, like, they're out of counter blast so they can't pay for it, something like that. Um I think would be kind of balanced. And also, over-triggers exist and are able to stop turns on a dime, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> over-triggers are very cool and balanced. Uh, that's literally become a thing in uh, my my locals, where if you, like, get saved because of an over-trigger, end up, you know, getting your re-stand off with the cater one or darts on, whatever. It, it becomes customary to go, over-triggers are great, aren't they? They go, yeah. And then you move on with your life. Yeah, they're very cool and good. <laughs> we're uh, we're we're gonna be saying that until the cows come home. Wait, what until they're fix? banned, really. Yeah. Yeah. They that's... can they can fix this at any point. Yeah. Yeah. That's the cows coming home. They're probably not gonna do it until at least set four because of Shaman King. Shaman King. I forgot about that. Shaman King. Jesus That's Christ. right. I forgot about Shaman King. I forgot it even existed as like a concept. <laughs> Can't wait for that month of absolutely fucking nothing. The battle aiming to be Shaman King. Ah, uh, this is gonna be a pain in the ass. <laughs> I think I'd actually rather have a month of nothing because then I won't have to get my hopes up. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't have re really any other ideas for how to implement floodgates into Vanguard, if at all. Um, <laughs> also, my eye really itches, but that's not their problem. So. What if it is? I don't think so. Uh, it it's just been this thing that's been bothering me since last week. So. Uh, Dang. Yeah. Oh well. Um, Let us know in the comment. What do you think of Atlas's pink eye? It's not pink eye. Uh, I, I work in an eye doctor's office, so me trying to figure it out, I was like, so what's going on? They're like, it's not pink eye. I'm like, oh, good, thanks. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Is it lupus? No, it's not lupus. It's never okay. lupus. Anyway. Right, uh, is it... <laughs> <laughs> Next is the night that guessing what Atlas is it has. Ligma? <laughs> I don't think it's Ligma. And it's only one eye. I feel like with Ligma, it's both eyes. Anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, obviously because this was like kind of a thought experiment episode, uh, I asked you, or we asked you, the, the listener, uh, do you think floodgates could be implemented into Vanguard? Uh, what would they look like? Uh, I, we, we encourage you to please uh, tweet at us at Nexus at Night. Um, we're also on Instagram, but we barely post there. If you want to support the show, patreon.com slash nexus at night, and that's three. Uh, thank you to our uh, $10 patrons, Darren, Cole, and Josh. Um, and then uh, where can they find the rest of us online? I am on Twitter at Wiggums, two Gs, two Zs. You can find me at Plasma Eclipse. And uh, you got, like, a new show thing going on on YouTube, right? Eh. Eh. Sure. I don't know. I like the name Root Beer Floats. It's a cool name. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. That, uh, that was always going to be the name, but, you know. Still. What I have think, I created? I think it's a cool show. It's been uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty fun. Um, and then you can find me at Atlas Novak, uh, Twitter, Instagram, or you can find my other podcast, at Generation Dan, on uh, Twitter. Um, new episodes every Thursday, so you can get this on your Wednesdays and Generation Dan on Thursdays. And uh, until next time, I was Atlas. I'm still Matt. I'm Rupier. And have a good night, everybody. Thank you.